Hi, my name is Teresa Weinstein and I'm doing a book review on Overcoming the Five Dysfunctions of a Team by Patrick Lencioni. And this man has formed his own consulting group called The Table Group that specializes in team development. He's also written five nationally acclaimed books on team development. And he really wants to use his books to educate leaders on five common problems that plague teams and to help leaders understand that team building can be difficult and it's not an easy fix. Um, this book is written for any team. No matter how big or small, it's really concise. It's to the point, it's easy to read, and it really defines team dysfunction and how to solve it. Um, I would highly recommend this book to anyone who is leading a team. There are five dysfunctions of a team, as described by um, Mr. Lencioni. Um, the absence of trust, which is the most important one, uh, fear of conflict, lack of commitment, avoidance of accountability, and inattention to results. And the first one is the absence of trust. Um, it is the most important and valuable characteristic a team can embody, and it's very hard to define as it means you know, different things to different people, but it's defined by the author as being open and honest and vulnerable to one another. Trust is not, I trust Joe will dominate the meeting with questions that are not productive and a waste of time. It's not predicting what a person's going to do based on what they've done in the past. Um, it's built on the vulnerability of the team members, the ability of the leader to be open, honest, and admit mistakes um, can be the key for a team to be functional. And making the words, I'm sorry, you're an asset to this team, I need help, I don't understand, those need to be a part of the team's um, daily vocabulary. And using tools such as the Myers-Briggs Types Indicator, the MBTI, to assess and reveal behavioral tendencies um, are a great asset and a great tool to um, start to understand the way the team members are going to work. Um, conflict is inevitable. Any team that wants to make great decisions and the best decisions will push each other outside of their comfort zone. Personal rejection and feelings will come into play. Um, however, it's a, the experience of the author that on the whole, people do not attack others personally and the intent is not one of maliciousness. Um, Lencioni has created a visual tool to help um, understand where that ideal conflict point lies. Um, teams must push themselves um, past the point of not wanting to make any waves, but not push too far past a point of personal attacks. To really delve deep and create a healthy team that can discuss problems, the leader needs to talk to the team as a whole and establish conflict norms. How does the team work? Using the MT MBTI tool can help others understand the personalities and work styles of others and help them address issues in different ways. Once these norms, how we, do we deal with conflict? How do, does Sally like to be spoken to? How does she voice her opinion? Um, and how does John uh, like to be spoken to? Um, the team can move forward, but this is not a quick fix and the leader needs to keep the team in check at all times. Um, if the team is composed of vocal people, they need to realize that they cannot um, go past the point of personal attacks, but if the team is more quiet, um, their tendency is to maintain this artificial harmony. They need to realize this is not the best way to make decisions for the group. Um, conflict is good, opinions are good, and if the leader can focus the group to use those opinions to make decisions, um, great progress can be made. Um, after the group is established as conflict is good and we need this to happen, um, they need to, the leader needs to help the group to do this. And they need, the leader needs to seek out conflict and needs to mine for conflict. Um, encourage healthy, healthy debate by asking the opinions of others. Um, another way is to give real-time feedback on conflict. Um, if John and Sally are talking and they're having a healthy debate on, with differing opinions, the leader can interrupt and say, guys, this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about healthy conflict. They're not personally attacking each other. They're talking about differing opinions and we're moving forward. Um, 
if there is a standstill on conflict resolution, the leader needs to understand why. Um, if, there, if it's an informational obstacle, um, this is related to the actual issue, and the leader may need to come in and be like a tiebreaker. Um, but environmental obstacle is one that, you know, relates to time and space. We have five minutes, we're in this hallway, we're not going to get anything done. We need to take this into um, get more time and into a larger meeting space. Um, a relationship obstacle um, is one where the people have a legacy with each other. They already don't like each other or they already understand that their opinions are not their own and so the leader needs to to flesh this out and get them talking um, positively. And an individual obstacle is one that occurs when one person has qualities that might hinder a resolution, like they just don't want to compromise, even if that's the greatest idea they've ever heard. Um, and the leader needs to understand these tendencies. Um, the third dysfunction of a team is the lack of commitment. A problem that people can encounter is feeling if decisions that have been made are wrong because they're not their own. Um, be, and they can also not fully understand it. Um, they don't understand why the decision was made and they're not clear on the details. Um, and so that can lead to a lack of commitment. Um, but teams that agree on everything are not finding the best solutions for the organization. They're either aiming to please or um, they don't care enough about it to create any conflict. The leader needs to help the team to understand that even though all the decisions will not be the ones that they vote for, they can still get behind them. The team members need to have their opinions heard and there needs to be healthy debate on different opinions. Um, according to the author, if the team is clear about why the decision was made and the ultimate goals of the decisions, nine times out of 10, they will leave the meeting motivated and supportive of the decision, even if they were opposed to it in the beginning. It's all about valuing differing opinions, healthy debate, and clear communication. Um, the next dysfunction is accountability. And keeping other accountable involves telling someone if they're not holding up their side of the deal and they're not delivering agreed upon results. Um, entering this danger zone is really difficult and most people avoid telling others that they are not me measuring up to standards. It's far easier to talk to someone about res results than behavior, but behavioral issues usually come before poor results. Um, the leader needs to hold the team responsible for issues. Um, this is difficult and many high-ranking leaders avoid this. They must put aside any hesitancy in speaking to people and understand that giving constructive criticism is a vital part of becoming a close-knit team. The leader who is afraid to do this um, will not inspire the team to do it on their own. Um, they need to immediately intervene and remind the team members of their responsibilities and eventually the team members will um, give, start to give peer-to-peer -peer feedback. Um, team building tools such as the team effectiveness exercise um, can give feedback both positive and negative and the leader is involved in this and this can really help. Um, meetings can really be an effective forum to maximize accountability. Each member quickly details what they're working on and people can inquire about their progress. They can actually say, hey, is this a, the best uh, use of your time right now? And they can go through that and that can really maximize accountability. Um, they can also use a scoreboard, um, a, a progress scoreboard, a results scoreboard to see who is pulling their weight and who isn't. And this is recommended by the author. Um, the last one is inattention to results. Um, Self-preservation and self-interest keeps us from focusing on the main goal. Um, and a great team can um, have many assets, but they will eventually lose focus and drive if they don't remember what they are working towards. Like the football kicker, kicker who needs to see um, that they are making this last field goal to win the game, the team needs to understand and see frequently what they are working towards. The team should use one or two goals to work towards at any given time, and they need to be objective. Profit, client satisfaction scores, or key milestones. They should not be subjective, um, dealing with politics, like is the boss going to be happy if we do things this way, or feelings, or outside opinion. And all of these things working together um, can really help your team be effective and um, a great uh, if, uh, teamwork moving forward. 
and I would really recommend this book and thank you for listening.